Hi everybody, welcome to Sandlink. Today it's a beautiful spring day, most unlike the start of this video. So let's roll that intro, let's see what happens. Hi everybody and welcome back to Sand In Junction. It is still icy cold as you can see and work progress in here is very very short. A little bit of work and then warm up your hands just trying to get some feeling back into them again. Now I did have a couple of lovely suggestions in the video before last about putting some suitable heating in here. I have got a heater beside me believe it or not and two bar heaters and they're running all the time but um, it's still not making an ape of a difference, really and truly. And I do hope that the temperature rises very soon. And on top of that, we've still got this bitter, biting wind pushing off the coast straight onto us. So it really isn't making any work out here very, very pleasant. That all said and done, what have I done? Not a lot, it's got to be said. I've been working on my painting channel quite a bit this last week or so. But I have also been waiting, uh, there's been a hold up in a delivery of some replacement points and stuff that I need to carry on with the track over there. As you remember in the last video, I messed up a crossover and one of the long radius uh, turnouts and um, yeah, I'm just waiting for those to come back in. I have been told that I can probably repair the ones that I've got, but because it's such an integral part and because the the replacement and doing anything like that in the future if something was wrong is too uh, intricate at that point I need to make sure that hopefully I get them right and put them in without any damage maybe try using those ones that I messed up somewhere else on the layout that's not a problem uh, in the future so with that said and done I am going to start working on the station throat coming out of Hive continue that little bit down to the corner and where the arches start and I'm actually going to be fitting and doing and preparing my first asymmetric three-way point never done one before and so I'm going to film that and hopefully if I make I don't want to make a mistake please I do not want to make a mistake <laughs> They are very expensive, so I really don't want to screw one of those up. But hopefully if I film it and it works out, you get something from it. And if not, you'll see how not to do one. <laughs> but anyway, I've got to I've got sort of I've got to get it right because I've got three more to do uh, two more after that to do, so on the actual Folkestone Harbour area. So I really want to do that. And I'll look on YouTube, I'm sure somebody somewhere has done a video on preparing a, an electro frog um, three-way asymmetric code 75 pico point <laughs> I hope so okay everybody welcome back now I've done a little research on this asymmetric three-way electro frog pico 75 point and it's not as hard as I thought it was going to be I really had so all this wiring, all this sort of work through here, and I really started to freak out a little bit as to what was going to go on. But actually the way it was explained to me is that you've got literally three frog wires on here and nicely insulated anyway, uh, which means I haven't got to do or worry about those. There's long enough wire to go down through the baseboard and connect up. The thing is that you've got a point here and a point here. You've got a point and a point. And they're just joined together. And so if you take that one out of the equation, you've got two frogs here that are for this one. So these two here go to this point motor that's set back here. And then this top one is going off that way. And it will go to this point motor here. So in a sense, you've got two that join up underneath. They go to this one. One at the top goes to this one. Very, very simple. As for the wiring up uh, of the electro frog, unlike the normal points where you've got that little bit of metal that's set in that you've got to disconnect it so it attaches to the front, none of that with this. All you have to do with this one is to have one wire that stretches those three and one wire that stretches those three, depending on which is your live or neutral, depending. 
but as long as there is a gap between them in there. And as long as you observe those three uh, areas, that and this, you're fine, you're home and dry. The only other thing is that you've got to get the springs out of here if you're using slow action point motors such as uh, cobalts or tortoise. So what you do need to do is take the little spring out there that otherwise these will snap. Okay if you're using solenoid but not if you're using slow action. Now I've seen people take this top cover off to remove it. You don't need to do that. If you're very careful and you position where that is you can see the spring moving inside there. Very carefully you can lever that out without any damage to the point. This one you need to undo all of this to make this one move but you've got the same thing in there. So hopefully should be able to just take that spring out and that makes that free moving. So I'm going to carry on and do this now and um, hopefully get it set up to lay on track. Uh, I have now wired up the uh, across these points here the gap in the middle so all the holes are drilled everything is ready to go and I have made one or two other pieces of track ready to go so I'm going to go and glue this and the next bit of uh, footage you'll see is with this I hope successfully in place. Okay just a little update I spent probably most of yesterday afternoon into the evening getting this all organized now this is the exit throat or station throat to uh, Hythe and it had five uh, turnouts in there and one three-way asymmetric which I have covered a little bit in this video now I wasn't sure and, and I didn't want to make any mistakes and what I did is I got them all prepped, all worked out, all sorted out, all the holes drilled, everything ready to go and last night after my meal I came out and I glued it all down as carefully as I could and I have covered it in weights and I'm, I'm almost scared to <laughs> take all these weights off to find like one of the fish plates has gone underneath or something awful's happened. I'm praying that when I lift these that will all be fine and sorted. Hi everybody and welcome back. Now I just want to bring you up to speed. It's the end of the day and I have been working pretty much all day on this. Now I've cleared all the weight off and everything seems to be absolutely spot on. There is a little bit of a wide bit here. I might well take a Dremel and just trim that off at the end of the day. I don't think it matters too much. I have laid the little bit of track there which is a little head shunt. And I've done the track up and underneath where the arches will be. So that's sorted out. That is now drying off from uh, late this morning. And since that time, I have played around with the track here. I've marked it out on the cork all the way down and into the station. Now, predominantly, the whole of this is a 24-inch radius curve. A bit tight, I know, but I don't have many options. It's probably a little less, probably 20 to something like there but mainly I've tested it all and it all works fine everything passes everything else and uh, I'm quite happy with it I don't have a lot of option not to be okay all I can say is a very happy hurrah <laughs> I've managed to get all this in yesterday I had to take it up because I slid one of the plastics underneath the track instead of on the rail itself another 10 minutes of uh, fuming and a bit of swearing <laughs> and I got it in I checked it all it's all fine it's all dry now all I got to do now is dive underneath move a leg from there out the way and then wire it all up along with the station throat from Hyde once that's done I can then start to uh, well I'm going to get the point motors in get them tested as well and then I start moving around here with the track off of there, off the top, and here into uh, Folkestone Harbour. Okay, just a quick little update. I've gone from the frying pan straight into the fire. <laughs> I had to take out a whole lot of cross section underneath there. I couldn't do it before the rail was laid, and then I had I realised that the uh, joint there started to come up and started putting a bevel over there into the two tracks. I managed to have enough meat in the wood underneath that I'd left to screw the back end of this down. What I didn't have was anything at the front to support the two and hold it down. 
I put a screw in there and there on a piece of CLS to block off the hole, making sure that I got enough room to put the two uh, cobalt IPs in. That's all fine. As I try to readjust some of this, I caught the blasted point here, <laughs> lifted it up and started to bend it. Honestly, I've never seen the shape of one. I hope uh, it's okay. I've put, I've tested it. I've put a lot of track, uh, wagons running over it. It doesn't seem to be a problem. And I've put, as you can see, <laughs> half of my weight system on the top with some more copy decks to hold it down. Hopefully that will keep it in check. But just to show you how much butchering has been going on underneath there, let me just pan you down and you can see some of the debris on the floor there. Hi everybody and welcome back. Where we got to last time was this butchering session over here. The points that I needed to put in there just wouldn't fit. I thought I had enough clearance by doing the earlier butchering. It wasn't anywhere near enough so I had to go under there and in a very, very cramped space start using a long saw to cut into the wood and finally cut it away so that I could clear enough space but that meant there was no support on this panel here only at the back and to do that I needed to put a piece in here which I've done uh, but in trying to get screws into there and get it down I actually bent this here or at least I thought I had I don't think I did I raised it up quickly stopped put it back down again glued it back down and it appears absolutely solid so I'm hoping that there will be no issues with that um, I sort of have rung trucks over it nothing seems out of the ordinary I got lucky I touch wood when I do that but yes I think I got lucky uh, that said and done underneath was all all carved out and it's all clear and it's all braced up now so that's good what I've also been doing is clearing out space under here all my cupboards and everything are clear so that I can start putting in uh, doing all the wiring of all this section I have some more cobalt IPs on order hopefully from rails they won't be too long what I'm going to do is now is swing around to the other side and show you what's been going on over there also okay so this is the mess at the other end the tables all under here everything has been cleared out and I've run a brand new bus wire all the way around from the top of Sandling Junction all the way down behind me and it will terminate just inside of the harbour. So under here I just got underneath and started to uh, look at doing all the wiring, all the connecting up of this area from here all the way down through. And here and the Folkestone, uh, sorry the Hythe Station, as it, uh, sorry Sandling Station, not Hythe, this is Sandling. And I got underneath and I thought, something's not right here. <laughs> and I made the most stupidest of errors. You can see it right there. Double slip, no problems, all wired in beautifully. What I hadn't done is I hadn't drilled the holes. <laughs> I just put the darn thing straight over the top. I couldn't put a point motor on if, if my life depended on it. So what I've had to do is take a small section of track out on the front here uh, to about there and carefully, very carefully, lever up the double slip. And this is one of the reasons why I use copy decks to lay my cork and my track because it will separate with a very fine bladed tool. This one is not the one I've been using, a little bit too stiff. I have another one which is thinner. A little bit more than an artist's palette knife, but not quite as, as uh, heavy as that one. But carefully, very carefully, underneath the double slip, being aware of where the wires are, because they are very fragile on this unit. And I slowly got it up, took my time, had all the marks ready to do this, I <laughs> just hadn't drilled it. So I've made amends, I've drilled them a little bit oversized than I would have done maybe, just to compensate for anything that's not quite goes back in the right way and then it's a case of cleaning off all the old cork from the point of view and if you're doing this as a piece of track you'd lift the cork as well you don't need to worry about trying to rub it all off but I didn't want to do that here everything's set up so I had to be very very careful first off with my fingers until they started to bleed <laughs> then a bit of paper and then a rag but it will clean off and the only reason I clean it off there's still one or two bits there 
but all the time I clean it off is it's that I can put fresh um, glue down and there will be no big lumps and it will not raise it to a level above where it was before so what I'm going to do now is put a little dropper on these two short pieces of track cut the webbing under here slide the fish plates out of the way so I can then put this this back in place first and then put the small bits of track in and then just join the fish plates on hopefully that will be the end of that matter and I can then continue to put the um, point motors on later how stupid and fundamental schoolboy error is that I couldn't believe it when I realized I got everything else and all of these have all been done I don't know why I did that I just it's crazy now I think I left you last time with a whole mess in here and it's still not quite tidy but I did manage to clear all the cupboards out from underneath I've rearranged a few redesignated areas for them and I've tidied up all the rubbish that was inside it's it's amazing how uh, in a year or two that you just stick things in drawers and you then sort of buy more stuff and it's crazy because you know if you just checked or knew where you had stuff you would save a, a, a ton of money but there you go i've learned that lesson i've now got two bottles of this and four bits of something else and it's all in one place now so i can go to and find what i need but what i did do is i managed to get all the point motors in underneath all the way through here all the way around and up to the two points along the main so now i have a full loop of track both ways both the up and down lines are working they've all been tested and checked i did have a little issue over here <laughs> because the two uh, points are side by side and the actual um, uh, frog uh, polarity green wires came through the same hole as it worked out I actually put them in the wrong one created a short but even for my simplistic electrical mind I managed to work out the problem and I luckily I've isolated the branch line from the main line so when it threw up the fault and was shorting out, I just take that off and then I just had that to deal with. And that was fine. I just backtracked the work that I'd done on the main line and sorted it. Actually, when I plugged in the branch line, there was a fault on that too. And I did the same thing with the double slip around this back side here. So again, once I'd realized my mistake, I corrected the fault with the... Um, two frog wires and uh, that is running smoothly they've all been programmed they've all been numbered and they're all working and it really was a treat last night just have trains running around without worrying about where they were going and uh, and also running trains well certainly from this point here up the branch line to sandling and taking trains off of the main line and I've mopped up a little bit of track coming down there. I've just put a little bit of electrical feed on the bottom end. And it's so nice. So what I've got to do now is just finish clearing off the remainder of this. And by it does look messy. But I assure you that is nothing to what it was uh, 24 hours ago. So uh, I will get set up with that. I will um, finish off all the bits and pieces I need to do here. I have the... Uh, uh, two boxes of points coming from rails they're very very good very quick and so I have another 24 points that I've just bought in it is so horrendously expensive this uh, whole, whole thing I wish I'd taken up golf it might have been a bit cheaper <laughs> but there you go but I'm going to get all this down get all this put away I'm going to cork the whole of this uh, island area where regards to the harbour scene itself, get that corked off hopefully today or tomorrow. And then I can start marking out the track plan for this area. I will, the line coming down halfway will be, it's all solid there. So that will be laid down properly. But the line from here to here will be temporary because of course um, James is doing that section with me as a collaboration well as that collaboration I just asked him he's doing the work uh, bless him he's a really great guy and um, so all that said and done I, I shall leave that as temporary and connect it up down 
here into the harbour end where I can make it solid again and I just have to put that bit in. So it does mean to say the two points there will not go in place just yet. They will be put in later. Okay, I thought I'd add a little bit more before I do a running session, but I've got everything ready to put these uh, point motors in on this area here. That's not a problem. And I've got the cork to there, as you've already seen. I need to lay the, the um, track down. I need to get the rest of the cork in through to the station thread. But what I have been doing, apart from tidying everything else up, is I've cleared the top off, cleaned it all off, and I've laid the, cut, the cork down on the... Uh, whole of the harbour area so that's all looking good it's not a perfect match in every little bit there's a couple of little bits that got cut wrong but uh, overall I, I think that it is almost spot on and I'm really happy with that it's been put down with contact carpet adhesive and uh, that I've done when I do any large area like I did for the whole of the fiddle yard down there I use the same method a contact carpet adhesive it really is good because it gives an even covering of glue on both surfaces and literally you just go for it and uh, as long as you get it right because it is unforgiving it won't let you take it back up again but uh, yeah not so bad we're ready to start laying track on this section now I'm really really pleased with the way that's gone down I have a uh, the bus wire goes round here to Sanding Junction, but it will terminate there, just under there, underneath the whole thing, and it will be another one going on through to the whole of the harbour. The reason being that if I get a problem, I can isolate this area from the um, branch line area, which is also isolated from the main line area. I may indeed isolate other parts of the main line structure which I hadn't done in the past, but I might do that in the future. I don't know yet. We shall see. Anyway, there you go. Um, I'll uh, do the running session and get this video out as soon as I possibly can. All the best. And if I don't talk anymore, <laughs> I wish each and every one of you, some of you are probably think, thinking that's a great idea if I don't talk anymore. <laughs> but before I go any further, let me just wish each and every one of you all the very best. Stay safe, everybody. Thank you to all my subscribers, both old and new. Without your support, it would be very hard to keep this channel going. So I do thank you for that. And I do read and enjoy and reply to all your comments. So with that all said and done, if you see anything in here you think I can improve upon, please don't hesitate to let me know. All the best to you. Take care. Stay safe. Happy modeling. Bye-bye.